In this movie, we continued with how you set up a very workable, easy to animate layer structure for eyes that you can then use on a master character and actually import them separately into other animations later on. Let's close our render and do the first things that all good people should do when working on files. Let's go ahead and save this file. This is in the working files if you want to go ahead and grab it. We'll name this instead of untitled anime. We'll name this Frog Master Front. It's good to have some naming conventions to work with. Frog is a first identifier. That it's a master file is the second one, meaning it's not animated. It's strictly the content. And then what view of the character you have, whether it's three-quarter side, top, for working with your animations easily later on. We'll go ahead and save that and continue our development. In our layers palette, we have the eyeball layer, which is this background. We've added a special effect, which is a radial gradient to give it kind of a colored outside and more of a white interior. The next thing we want to do is to create the actual pupil layer. I'll create a vector layer for that. We'll rename it pupil. Let's go ahead and begin drawing our first background or the iris portion of the eye. I'll grab the circle and just shift and hold that and constrain it to a perfect circle. We'll give it these little beady eyes maybe a little bit. I'll go ahead and grab my shape move tool right over here. We'll move that into place. Now let's style this up just a little bit and we'll use some of these style features that we've only briefly touched on. Let's go ahead, since it's a frog, and give it some green eyes, but now we're going to do a couple tricks to make this uh, work a little bit better. Keyboard shortcut Q, I'll select the shape. We'll come over to Effect 1, and I'm going to choose Gradient. But this time we're going to pull off a little optic trick that is common to illustrators and animators if they're familiar with it, and that is the top part of the iris is darker, the bottom part is lighter because of the way light happens to hit and interact with the eye. So it's actually the reverse of what we see going on here. But for the bottom portion of the color, we're going to make that a light green. Something, you know, I want a little more lime green than that, I suppose. Technically, I suppose it's froggy green. We'll select OK, the black area now. We'll go ahead and make this a very dark green, like so. We'll reverse the gradient from 270 to 90. If you hold the shift key down while moving the gradient dial, it will constrain itself to even increments. So it's a little easier to get that put in there. I'll select OK. Now notice there is no update here. These effects are always render time effects and they do not show up when you're working on the file. The next thing I want to do is come down to the outline. We're going to enable an effect gradient. And now we see the stroke gradient going on right here. I want to leave this gradient almost the reverse of the other one, but I'll make it darker to help show the outline of the eye. So color one, which will be the top, we'll leave that a lighter green, but not quite as light as the interior of the eye. We do want it to be darker to help define that, but it'll be a nice interplay between the two. I'll select OK for the darker color. We'll definitely go with a very dark green at this point, approaching black, and select OK. The last thing I want to do for this one is to create this thick and thin line quality. Keyboard shortcut Command D on the Macintosh, Control D on the PC. We get our random figures, and I'll leave that at four right now. So we can see a little bit of what's going on if we do a quick render. We'll see that now we're getting some really kind of fun and cool looking eye looks to it. Let's finish this off. Honestly, seeing that with the way the, uh, the variants in there, I may want to change the gradient just a little bit on that. So let me pop in here and reopen that and we'll reverse this. It's a little bit of look and see to see what simply is going to work best with your animation. We'll take a look. Yeah, it's looking better. We'll go ahead and save. Now the last part here, or approaching the last, is the pupil itself. Let's go ahead and create a new circle. Hold the shift key down and draw. 
reposition this, we can always come up here and grab our Translate Tool Keyboard Shortcut T. I'll move that to the center. And the fill color for this, Keyboard Shortcut Q to select that. We're going to change it from white to black. Now I want to add a little bit of a highlight, a light highlight, to play off the effect of the eye. I'll draw one more circle. Keyboard shortcut T to move that. and I'll move it outside of the pupil a little bit so it's between the pupil and the iris. Now keyboard shortcut Q to select it. I do not want an outline on that and I want it to remain white. With that in place, when we do a quick render, we see that we're getting some fun effects going on right here. I'll close this. The next layer that we want is the eyebrow that's floating up above the head because I want it to follow the eyes, although we can animate that separately. So we'll come down to our Layers palette, add a new image. Not add a new image, let's come to a vector layer. We'll click on this and rename it Eyebrow. Go ahead and draw this. Now we've got that in place. For our next movie, we'll look at one of the last steps that we'll be doing, and that's integrating masking with this so that we can get an animatable eyelid that covers this eye.